Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Houston, no problems today. Oceanic feeding relationships? What's up with that? You may recall from biology class that you learned about, you know, primary producers, food webs, these kinds of things. And that's true here in uh, the ocean. So this is like ocean, uh, we call this term here, we call them trophic levels. Trophic, by the way, means nourishment. It's a scale from one to five, where one would be the primary producer. So in the case of the ocean, that's the, the phytoplankton. They're the thing that's doing most of the, of, the, of the photosynthetic process. And then if you will, a five might be a shark or something like that, because as that happens, right? And what happens when you go from level one to level five is the amount of energy transferred gets lower and lower and lower. So take a look at this graph right here. So when the sun goes down, right, this, the, the, the sun hits the earth with 500,000 units of energy, and then when the phytoplankton eat it up, they only get 10,000 of it, only 2% of it's efficient. Right? You see that right there. And then when we get to the zooplankton, right, you get the 10,000 down to 1,000, okay? And now we still have small creatures. And then they get eaten by smaller creatures, or bigger creatures, pardon me. And that 1,000 becomes 100. And then you get to the bigger creatures, and then that becomes a 10. So generally speaking, there is a 10% efficiency in um, marine productivity, or marine um, food webs. I'll say relationships. Now, at the first step, of course, you see right there, of course, is the, the sunlight isn't even uh, 10%. And, yeah. Now, let's talk about the difference between two different terms. One is a food chain, and the other is a food web. Now, in a food chain, you start with a phytoplankton. I just say phyto to zo. And it goes to a, uh, some kind of a, you know, fish one. And that goes to fish two. This is level one, two, three, four, and maybe then he gets eaten by fish, that's a two. Number three, fishy three, and that's a five, right? And he's the, the top of the pyramid, the top of the food chain. Maybe you've heard that idea. You get the food chain. Now, the, in a food chain, that is where this is only eaten by this, and this is only eaten by this, et cetera, et cetera. But what's more realistic, or actually better, is that we have something called this, a food web. Now in a food web, take a look at this picture right here that we've got right here. This is the North Sea herring, right? Now you start with these diatoms and dinophylagodites, whatever the heck those are called, but then they get eaten by different creatures and they get eaten by different creatures and it's much more of a web and see the North Sea herring doesn't just eat every, it's, it's more complex. So if one creature goes out, he still can survive. You see, I guess it's a, it's a way to diversify your life if you're a creature. If all you eat is one thing, and if that one thing goes extinct, you go extinct. So food chains are not as advantageous as a food web. That's why a lot of the creatures on the earth are endangered, because they rely on one specific food to survive. If that food group goes away, then they don't do well. This is true in in aquatic systems, marine systems, as well as in the land. I mean, for example, panda bears. <laughs> we all know about panda bears. If they don't get the bamboo, they're dead. They're, a, they're in a food chain issue. They've got to have this bamboo thing, and if their, their system is gone, then they're not going to survive if they're uh, the bamboo tree, or if they're not living near bamboo trees. So they're much more susceptible than over here, the case of the herring, who has many, many more options. So the chances of him going extinct are much less likely than the poor panda bear. Makes sense? So food webs are better than food chains. We've learned so much about the oceans and the things that go in them and also the nature of the water. Because this leads eventually to our next topic, which we're going to talk about in a big group, is it causes the oceans to move, which causes weather and causes so many other things to happen. But we'll save that for the next series. Houston, we don't have a problem. We'll see you awesome people in class.